SX count is the 790RZ. Begin it, what is the difference between the 790 and the 690 and why should you choose the 790 over the 690? Initially, you will require BIOS update to install any 13th gen CPU on the 690 which may be a little headache especially if you use the 690 port doesn't have a BIOS flashback like Gigabyte ports. And of course there is slight improvement on the chipset side which is having more PCI, more bandwidth toward PCI lanes and USB ports. That's not a big deal at all on the chipset. The biggest difference between the 790 and the 690 comes from memory speed. Any Z790 board can handle up to 7000 megatransfer per second, a little high end can do up to 78000 and more high end like uh, Z790 ROG Apex or a Stratheon or MSI Unify X can do over, over 8000 8, actually. So which was not really possible with Z690 board. But if you have got really good 13 gen CPU with a Hynix ADI RAM and a good 690 board and more importantly your uh, CPU mounting pressure is perfect on the socket, then maybe you can hit 7000 on your Z692, but that's still hit or miss. So if you want high speed RAM, your money should be at Z790. Speaking about RAM speed, PCB layers matter, okay? So Gigabyte didn't tell any information on the website about that. But I saw some review articles, uh, including WCCF Tech, have mentioned this board to have an uh, eight layer PCB, which was a little unbelievable to me considering the price point of this board. But this board can reach up to 76,000 OC. So maybe this is true because MSI six layer PCB like um, G790 Tomahawk or G790 Edge Wi Fi can only do up to 7200 megatransfer per second. So if this is 8 layer PCB, Gigabyte did a double job, really. But wait, Gigabyte's G790 or as Elite AX is 6 layer officially and it does 7600 too. So ROG just should be 6 layer because it's uh, this both uh, motherboard shares same DN internally. Also, if you look at the G790 Strix AF, which is a 6 layer PCB board, can reach up to 7800 OC. So maybe this is just a different memory topology thing between different manufacturers. I don't know how to tell the PCB layer by just looking at it. Maybe Bilzoid can help. Now this motherboard is designed for creators more than gamers who screams a sleek minimalist aesthetic. One of the reasons why I went with this. But this, this thing like why Gigabyte? Why? I mean I'm very certain this is gonna be covered by something. So next time Gigabyte fix this, you don't need to do this. Why? It features uh, PCIe 5 M.2 here and but note if you install any um, SSD here like PCIe 4, PCIe 3, any, it will eat half up your bandwidth from here and only provide x8 speed instead of x16 to your graphics card. Uh, still I don't think that makes significant difference to graphics performance but you still would not want to install this SD here because um, if you are a gamer and you you have a high-end graphics card, why should you lose performance even if it is a 5%, 3%? This still makes sense for creators who heavily rely upon data transfer over a graphics performance. So if you want to install SSD, install here. Here is a five, four SSD right here. Like one is here. Let me just quickly open it. Yep. And this seems really heavy duty seat sink. It doesn't have any, it should not have any problem pulling your SSDs. <coughs> so, yeah, there is a 4 SSD slot M.2, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4. And this one is directly to your CPU, and this tray is to chipset. All are 4.0, PCI 4.0. <coughs> so, there is your PCI lens. Now this board features LLC1220 audio codec, which is the second highest in the market, not the first. Uh, the first is uh, 4080, uh, not the RTX 4080, but ALC 4080, okay? Um, and the G790 Tomahawk used that one. So if you are an audio nerd, you can look for it. <coughs> This board has Intel 2.5 gig LAN along with Wi-Fi 6E 
and Bluetooth 5.3, which is common these days. Along with you get 4 USB 3.2 Gen 1 10 GB, 2 USB 3.2 Gen 2 20 GB, 1 10 GB Type C, 1 20 GB Type C, which this is uh, Gen 2, and you get also a front USB Type C header, which is also 3.2 Gen 2 20 GB. Now the important part <coughs> VRM. Speaking about VRM, the whole VRM is here and is cooled by this heatsink. It also has a copper heat pipe that connects these two together. I'm not gonna open it because you know I don't get motherboards for free to do experiment. I would like to. Gigabyte, if you are listening, MSI, ASUS, SROC, NGXT. Buster. Okay, anyway, so this board features 16 phases for V core with 70 ampere power stages, two phases for VCC and auxiliary, and one phase for your iGPU, which is 55 ampere. Total is 19 phase. This is really hefty, but also this is common these days. It's good, it's actually really overkill. You don't need to worry about even overclocking a 3900K until you use uh, liquid nitrogen on it then you are maybe looking for apex or something <clears throat> to be honest all g690 and g790 motherboards have powerful vrm you should not have any concern about it but yes yeah, some motherboard can handle current repeal very smoothly some don't you need an oscilloscope to measure such thing so okay that's it for this video take care happy new year thanks for watching